Okay guys, welcome to another video. Um, I apologise about the, the very amateurish uh, setup here. I've got a dog and I've got my messy room. Well that's actually how the cables always lie um, underneath my TV. And you can see my feet as well. Aye, this, uh, I've, I've been promising to make this video for a couple of weeks. Now, I actually did make this uh, last week. And as usual, when you go to get something working it didn't work properly um i had to kind of tweak the thing um to get it working so i ended up giving up and deleting the video so yeah this as you can see from the title of the video this is a it's an emulator for the commodore amiga for the raspberry pi now you've probably if you've heard the raspberry pi you probably be aware of a really clever bit of software called retro pi <coughs> excuse me it's a uh, it's basically a one-stop solution for all your emulators for stuff like the Dreamcast, PlayStation, all the usual suspects, Mega Drive, SNES, NES, all these things, including the Commodore Amiga. Now, I've found that it's the interface that RetroPie has, it's very much, you know, you get a list of games, you pick it, away you go. Um, the problem with the Amiga and any, in fact, any of the sort of the, the computers you actually need a keyboard to really get the most out of it. A Mega Drive's fine, you press the start button, away you go. Commodore Amiga, you have to press certain buttons and that kind of stuff, F keys. So it doesn't really lend itself that well, you really need a, a, a keyboard. But uh, I watched a video, one of my mates sent me a link to a video, and I'll, I'll put a link below. Um, I think the guy's name's Dan, is it Dan Wood? Um, he's a very, very popular YouTuber, he's right in his, in his Amiga. He made an excellent video explaining how you can put this software um onto a raspberry pi and then what it what, what it what it basically does is it then boots to a sort of configuration screen and you can load up floppy games and that kind of stuff but it's not really it doesn't really feel like you're playing an amiga because you're just going to this option screen but what you can do is you can then install workbench um and then you can install floppy disks you can play demos you can also uh, watch, not watch, you can play WHD load games, which is a really, really, really clever bit of software which this guy brought out for the, the real Amiga. And it allows sort of like hard disk, it allows basically floppy games to be con converted to a sort of hard disk type file. So it means that if you've got a, a 10 disk game, you've only got the one, you'll have to run it and it'll automatically swap disks type thing. You don't have to fanny about with taking disc A out and putting disc B in and all that kind of crap. So it's really good. Now, it did take me about... I started at about 7 o'clock one night and it was 1 o'clock in the morning before I finished. Don't ask me how to go about installing Workbench and all that kind of stuff because I was following... I was doing a lot of Googling, um, watching various tutorials and following instructions on uh, Google... And I basically, I ended up kind of getting it to work. You know, I didn't quite know what I did, but what you've got to do is once, you, once you've once you installed this uh, piece of software, you then, you've then got to install a workbench. Now, I had a file on my computer, a system file it's called, and I just basically copied that across. And that then, when I switch it on, it boots into, into the Amiga workbench operating system. I then figured out, how to copy WHD load files across. What you've got to do is you've got to create hard disks. Now, it's not that difficult. Like I says, Google it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to start trying to tell you how to do it because I'll end up probably making things worse, complicating it even further. But it wasn't that difficult. If I can figure it out, anybody can. Once you've installed Workbench, you create hard disk files, um, directories, and then what you can do is to transfer files on the Raspberry. I mean, this is a, a basic... This is a Raspberry Pi 2... Now, the software, they recommend you use a Raspberry Pi 3 because it's obviously more powerful. Um, I don't have it. This, I had this one spare. I mean, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3, which is in my little uh, arcade cab thing. This is a spare RetroPie 2. RetroPie, this is, a, sorry, a spare Raspberry Pi 2 in its little case. I mean, you know, you've seen a Raspberry Pi before. It's got the little micro USB power cable. You've got your HDMI out. That's your audio out, I think, around the side here you've got your uh, your LAN adapter thing you've got four USB things which is excellent I think the Raspberry Pi 1 only had two 
Um, this here is a wireless keyboard thing. Plug it in and it just works. So that is it. That is basically your Raspberry Pi. And underneath here, if you can see it there, is the SD card. Now what you do is you basically you download the file. Um, I mean, I'll post as many links as I can. I'm sure I actually came across another link that kind of gives you even better information, which I shall try and post below. Um, once you've uh, downloaded the file, you then use a piece of software to write the image onto the SD card, and then um, you put this into the, the Raspberry Pi and switch it on. It will boot to that configuration screen. You then download the Workbench file, and what you do is to transfer files from your computer to Raspberry Pi. Just simply get a, a what do you call it? Get a, a USB stick, format it to FAT16 or FAT32, I think it is. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can plug, you can basically copy files from your PC or your Mac onto the USB stick. Stick the USB stick into one of the USB inputs, like so. And then uh, I'll show you, I'll, I'll boot the thing up just now and let you see how you actually copy files across. But like I said guys, I'll give you as much information as I can. You're going to have to do a bit of digging yourself. But it took me about four hours all in to get this one. In fact, no, it wasn't. It was more than that. It was probably about five hours all in to get it from starting off to what I actually finished with. Now what I've got is, so that is basically the Raspberry Pi. What I have got here. Uh, oh, I'm getting old. I've got a, obviously a keyboard, a wireless keyboard, which will work with that. Now the thing that's really good is I've got a standard, you've seen one of these before, a normal Atari 8-bit. Where's the cable about? Da -da 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 -dee -dee. Yep, it's your standard Atari thing. Now i got this little device, it's, well, you can see where it is. Come on, out you come, wait a minute. There we go. It's, basically it's got the female, come on focus damn you, there we go, it's got the female input on one side, and on the other side, it has got your standard USB, so it basically means that I can plug in one of these joysticks into this thing, and then I can then use the Amiga with this. Now this thing obviously, it also works on obviously a PC, so it means that you can play all your emulators, you can play your Commodore 64, emulators, your Spectrum, your Amstrad, your Atari ST, your Commodore Amiga, any computer emulator that used a joystick, you know, plug that into this and your PC will just pick this up as a, a joystick. Um, so it's really good, it means that you've got the proper control. So that is it, and down there I've got obviously the mouse as well, and that's the, the power cable for the, the Raspberry Pi. So let's uh, go and set it up and come back in a second. Right, okay, this is me switching it on from the start so you can see what happens <clears throat> excuse me now when you first install that software on the, the Raspberry Pi like I say it boots the configuration screen but once you've installed Workbench um, it will boot into Workbench but there's an option what you've got to do is there's an option which I'll try and remember to show you um, to get it to boot straight into Workbench like so so there you go if you've got an Amiga you'll be quite familiar with that layout um, yep, I'm not going to go into details about how the Amiga works because I'm the, probably my experience of the Amiga was putting a disc in, switching it on and then uh, changing discs. I was never into the programming or sort of even the operation side of it. Um, now you can basically configure this to be whatever Amiga you want. Now you'll see up here it's an Amiga, it's running Workbench 3.1 um, AGA, so it's actually set up as a, an Amiga 1200. It's got, I think it's 2 meg of chip RAM, and it's got, I think, 9 of fast. Now, I was, I've been experimenting, trying to find out what kind of configuration works the best, and this one seems to be the best, but I dare say there's going to be some games where you might have to tweak something. So that is it, I mean, you, that is your, basically, that's your workbench. Now, what I've got is I've got it set up with three disk drives, so if I click on DH1, it takes a few settings to come up. These are all my floppy disks. There you go. That will be familiar to any Amiga owner. These are all the floppy disks. Now, you don't really load them through double clicking on them, I don't think. I don't know if you can do that actually. So that's floppy disks. Now, somebody might be able to tell me if you right click 
like that, if you right click it and you go to rename and you then type in floppy games, okay, what it'll do is it'll save it, it'll change it, like so. Like so, here we go, floopy, floopy, that'll do, floopy games. Now, if I remember rightly, to get the Amiga to save the workbench, you right click and you go to snapshot. Now, if you do window, I think that only does the window that you're in, but if you do all, it's supposed to save everything. So if you do all, now I have tried that and it, when I switch it back on, it disappears. Maybe someday, maybe Adam, if you're watching this, Adam, you might be able to tell me you're the Mr. Amiga Meister. You could possibly tell me what I'm doing wrong. It might be something to do with the, the emulator not saving it or something. DH3 is another hard disk. You go into that. Now these are actually demos. These are, I mean, back in the day, there was a lot of, sort of demos, music demos, graphics. And the guys that put these together, the programmers, they were very, very clever guys. I mean, they used to, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think these guys used to hack games, you know, for piracy. But they also came up with these some of these wonderful demos. I mean, I'll, I'll let you see a couple shortly. Um, they really pushed Amiga to the limit. The thing is, I used to always think, well, why can't games incorporate, you know, the graphics? But the demo is non-interaction. It's just, or non-interactive, I should say. It's just displaying graphics. So to in try and incorporate that in a game, I think would take a lot more. Um, may the Amiga may not be capable of doing it. Um, so again, now, one thing I've noticed, these are all kind of higgledy-piggledy. They're all not in proper order. So, right, okay, that's still, in fact, you may notice, I didn't notice that, if you look at the wee bar at the bottom here, it's still getting weird, is it going to get weird, which means it's still kind of reading what's on that. Because it's an eight, because all these are saved in SD card, it's not the quickest, I think a, a proper Amiga would be a bit quicker. I think it's finished loading them all up, so what I'm going to do is, if you right click, and you go to redraw, sort, that should then put them in alphabetical order. Like so. Now I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll let you see one of the, the demos since I've put them in order. Now you can scroll along like so. I'm going to show you this. The one I'm going to let you see was one of the very, very, very first demos I ever got to see on the Amiga. Apart from the obvious Bong demo um, and the Juggler, which are really impressive. But they were very, very early on. They were actually made by the Commodore crew. The one that I... Uh, remember playing here, not playing, seeing, is this one up here called, Di not Diamonds, Devils, Demons Are Forever. It's maybe not the most impressive now, this was a very early one. So double click, and there you go, you get the little uh, icon, double click that. Fingers crossed, now you'll see there it says WHD load, press escape to quit, so that is a WHD load file. I'm going to shut up and let you, let you see this. Hopefully you can tell, it is, from what I can gather, I know it's only one wee thing when the balls go to the bottom and touch the checkered base, they kind of disappear. I don't know whether that's a flaw in this emulator. Yeah, the thing you have to appreciate guys is this is the emulator, it's not a real Amiga, it's running Amiga software. So there's always going to be some games or demos that maybe don't work quite how they should. And that is basically that demo, it just goes on and on, it's, you know, but back in 1987, you know, that blew my socks off. Now I think some, some games and demos seem to run a wee bit quicker than they would in a normal 1200. Um, I don't know if there's any way to override that, but I'll come in the configuration part shortly. So I'll press escape, print, was it print screen? Uh, yep, escape button, so that takes me back to workbench. Now, the other one I'm going to let you see, which is the classic in it. This was, my mate had, a, I had an Amiga, he had a PC, I mean, he was playing 3D Wolfenstein, 
and he was right into his uh, rave music. He used to go to all these raves back in the nineties, and I let him see this, and this absolutely, uh, this blew his mind. It absolutely blew his mind. This is the classic Jesus on ease. See there, press F10 to quit. You see it came up, insert second disc, and it just does it automatically. I think sometimes the sound is slightly off, but in the main it's pretty good. Adam, you might be able to comment. Shagra, an excellent name. I should have called myself Shagra rather than Meme Meister. But I think that is bloody impressive, it really is. I think this demo goes on for something like 20 minutes and it does change, the graphics change as does the music obviously. You know that kind of stuff there, it may not look impressive now but back in 87 that was just mind blowing. Yeah, that's Jesus on his F10 to come out. Yep, I've got tons of these. Now these, all these WHD files, which I've just showed you for demos, they're all readily available on Google. You just need to search them, guys. Um, please don't ask me for them because, you know, they're, they're available. You can get them yourself and they do take up a lot of space. So that is, uh, I'm going to rename this one demos, but I said once I switch it off, We'll probably go back to DH3. If somebody can tell me what I'm doing wrong, or is it possibly just a, a setting or something, maybe in the Amiga, I'm not sure. Demos. So that should change to demos. There we go. And the last hard disk which I've got is DH2, which you'll see in a second. Now these are all, again you'll see that going right down, that's it kind of looking, that's it finding all the content, so you're better to let that finish. But now there, there's two ways to run this, to run one of these games, you can either just go straight in like double clicking it, Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. There we go, it's got a big nice icon and then double click. Now, I've got to say, most of the, the games I've tried have worked absolutely fine. Some have played a wee bit quick. Now, if you look at the top, you'll see the memory is going down, so it is loading. Be patient. <laughs> Believe me, I've uh, I've tried to run something and I end up double-clicking it again, and I'm waiting and waiting. You've, just, you've got to be patient. It's not the quickest to load, but once it's, once it's loading, it's absolutely fine. So it should come up shortly with the little uh, WHD load screen. As you can see the chip memory is going down. Yeah, it's taking a wee while. What I might, I think what you might be better doing actually with Amiga is actually switching it on and off. Rebooting rather than doing what I'm doing here. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do actually. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to take you into the configuration screen. If you don't put Workbench on, this screen is the one you would get. Now if you press F12, bunk, 
this is very very similar to W what was it Win UAE, which is a really good Amiga emulator for Windows and Mac. Now you've got all your different things, configurations. These are all pre configured configurations. Now the one that automatically runs is called Auto Start and it's set I've got it set up as a basic E twelve hundred. If you go to the CPU, I've got it set to standard six eight oh two. I don't know what these are, no idea. You've got your is it a floating something? I don't know what that <laughs> processor or something, whatever it is, I don't know. I've got that set to none. Now the twelve hundred I believe ran at fourteen megahertz. So I've got that set. I mean if you want to make it you can make it faster if you want, you can change it to a six eight oh four, eh, oh forty, whatever. I've just got it set to a basic twelve hundred. Chipset, got it set to AGA. I mean if you want to play a, an A five hundred you can set it to OCS and it'll just boot up like uh, an A500. ROM, this is where you have to have your Kickstarter files and what you do is you basically point to them. Um, RAM, again you can tweak that, I've got the chip, I've got chip memory set to 2, I've got fast memory set to 8. I'm really not sure what Z3 fast or RTG is, no idea or slow, somebody may be able to tell me, I mean there may be better configurations than I've got set up but I found this works. Now if I want to play a floppy game, you go to floppy, you then go to the little three buttons, click on that. There you go, you can see there. These are all my floppy games. So let's let's try Fire and Ice. I've never actually tried that one since it's Christmas. Ah bollocks, I just put I put the wrong one in, so let's just click on that again. Normally I wouldn't bother loading floppy disks. I would use the WHD because they are a lot quicker to load. So you can click on that like so fire. Fiendish Freddy, Fire, the, Fire, there we go, Christmas special. Ah, it's only one disc. Now, if there was two discs, like for example this one, that's that's disc drive number one, and disc drive number two is enabled. If I want a third uh, floppy disc, I can click on that. If I want a fourth one, I can click on that, but I'll leave them turned off. Not many games support two or three disc drives, I don't think. So if I wanted to put in, if I've got the two floppy discs, I can then click on that, and I can put in Fire and Ice disc number two. So you'll see there, disc one, disc two, and then what you do is you go to reset. But what I want to do is I'm going to eject that and eject that. I want to play the Fire and Ice Christmas special, like so. Now, floppy drive emulation speed, it, it does exactly what it says in the tin. It's set to 100, like so, and it will obviously take, it'll run at normal speed. I've got it set to 800. You'll see there it says 100%, well that's 100% speed, that's a compatible option. I've got it set to 800 so it's basically loading 8 times as quick. Some games don't like that so you may have to go back in. Now hard disks, hard drives, I have got, oh to, to create a hard disk, you basically click on, um, is it Add Directory I think is it, Add Directory and then you name it and you just point, point it to where the, the folder you've created. But, I'm not going to get in that guys because I'm going to end up confusing you all the more. Google is your friend but I said I'll put as much information in the, the comment section below so have a look at that. But what you want to run WHD uh, load files, you need that's a standard floppy, you need to then set up additional disk drives. So I've got three additional disk drives, I've got my WHD games, I've got my demos and I've got my work. Oh, it's called work, that was just one I gave it. You've then got your display. You can mess about with width and height and if I want to make it full screen I'll untick that and it'll take up the full size of the screen but the Amiga was 4x3 so I'll leave it at that. You can frame skip if you want. Sound, I've got it defaults to enabled most accurate stereo frequency. I've just left all that. Now to use a joystick you need to have your joystick plugged in when you switch on. Click on that. Now the, the mouse is automatically configured. D-pad is joystick so if I click on that you'll see here retro joystick so that should now use my joystick to play games don't have to touch any of this miscellaneous um, nothing there I really need to worry about save states I've never actually done that and uh, there was only one what was the thing it was a configuration there was one there's an option to boot when you install workbench it boots straight into workbench because if you don't enable it what it does is I'm trying to see, I'm trying to look around the camera, I've got the camera on a tripod obviously. I thought it was miscellaneous. Aye, that's the one. 
when when you first that there is automatically ticked which means when you boot up it boots to this screen but if you untick that any change you make to configuration you then go back to that and then just click on save and that will save it so that is basically it so i've put in a floppy disk fire a nice christmas special let's reset it and it should then that's the equivalent of you putting a disk in and switching on and off you see there it loaded mega quick so using the mouse start game press the mouse button Like I said, for sort of pretty much 100% compatibility, you're better off leaving the floppy speed to 100%. I'm an impatient sod, so I've got it to 800%. But they don't always work, uh, and I'm getting the feeling this ain't going to work. It probably should have loaded by now. I don't think it is. So what I'm going to do is press F12, and then I'm going to eject that, and we shall put in this one. And then we'll put in disc 2. So I've got the two, disc 1 in there, disc 2 in there, reset. How do we start? These things always annoyed me. Infinite life, start with life. Start, come on, just... Alright, right, right mouse button. <laughs> just a wee bit of experimentation. There we go, fire and ice, blah blah blah. Left mouse button, normal, yep, yeah, we'll just go for normal. Now that's a loading a lot quicker. Now with the Amiga, and I'm not going to try and explain why, with the Amiga, a lot of games, they only use the top sort of, I don't know, four-fifths of the screen. There was always that annoying bit at the bottom, but that's just the way the Amiga was. A real Amiga. So press the fire button. Please insert data disk. Right, okay, so this game doesn't like the second disk drive, so what I need to do is go F12. What was that going to? Wait a second, did that find it? Ah, it did. Ah, software failure. <laughs> It's just like a real Amiga. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, I'm going to disable that, so I've only got the one disc, and then go to, I'm going to reset. You've just got to experiment, basically. So left mouse button, right mouse button. What I might need to do is slow the disc drive down. I mean, I've got this running at 800%. This is an excellent game actually written by Andrew Braybrook, who wrote Iridium. Fire and ice. Right, so it's asking for the second disc, so press F12, and then I go eject, and then I go, there we go, disc 2, and then resume, and press space, or fire. And we got a software error, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try once, I'll, uh, I'll ramp that down a wee bit, I'll put it to 200% I think, try that. 200% so we'll take out that disc and we shall like so and you will reset the thing. But I wouldn't ever really use floppy games unless I didn't have the WHD file handy which I'll let you see shortly. I've got to say, most of the games I've tried work absolutely perfect. And you do get these issues when, you, when you're using an emulator, you need to understand that it's a program that somebody's written to pretend it's another computer. You know, the fact that these emulators can even write, run anything is quite incredible. And believe it or not, you do get these issues on even on that. I've got a Commodore 1200 and you get these kind of issues. So there we go, F12, eject, and then let's pop in the second disc, like so, and resume, let's see if this works. Oh, 
space fire it's going to come up with software ah right it doesn't like that game right anyway go back to that now what i want to do is i'm just going to reboot i'm going to take the disc out like so and i'll do a reset and that's just like switching the machine on and off so it should boot back into workbench that's per normal now you'll probably notice it's not saved the names of the discs yeah, don't know why that doesn't work. If anyone can tell me why that doesn't work in this, let me know. I might be doing something wrong. I actually have the same problem with my real 1200, but I'm using one of these CF cards in a disk drive, so it might be something to do with that. Now, if I want to play a WHD load game, I can either load it straight from... Um, I can load it straight from, let's see... Straight from here... Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. So let's try that. Did we try that one? I can't remember. I don't think we did. So you can either load it like so, which I shall do. Ah, that's right. Yeah, I did try this, but I think, uh, you go, attempting to load. I think because maybe I didn't turn it on and off. Some days you're better rebooting. I always remember the Amiga, and the same with Atari ST, they always used to tell you to switch it off and leave it off um, for like 10 seconds to kind of flush the memory out. need to be patient but it must admit it usually does work eventually ain't it always the way this is what happened when I was making this originally this video um, nothing was working absolutely nothing was working it was taking forever and I was just I was losing the will to live and I thought I can't possibly put it up I'm trying to sell this to people I'm trying to make people want to go and buy one and do it themselves. Well, we're we getting somewhere. Oh, there we go. I think we're going to get this. It's just going very slow for some strange reason. Press left mouse button. Recover. Man, it's crashed. Right, anyway, listen, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reboot again. But then I'll show you the best way to load WHD games once it finishes loading. But I mean, I've got a 1200, so that's what I use most of the time. But having this, that can just plug this into the HDMI. I can have this downstairs in my living room. It's excellent. It's a really good way. It's a cheap way to get a good Amiga. Um, I mean, it's not it's not as good as a, a proper Amiga for obvious reasons. Um, but you know, you can get a Raspberry Pi 2 for probably about 20 quid. SD card, maybe a fiver. You know, it's really, you know, the hardest part is just putting the thing together, but I managed it, so you can too. So if you right click, there's a program called, excuse me, iGame. So go up to there. Now, obviously, your workbench is going to be slightly different, depends on how you've installed it, etc. Now, iGame is a program which is completely free, as is WHD. WHD load used to cost money. Now, I actually bought it about a month before it, the guy released it for free. I mean, it's been out for years and years and years and years. And I bought it and then a month later it became free. <laughs> so you can download it completely free. Now this, this program does take a wee while to load. There you go. Right, now you can see here it's found 2,612 games. Now these are obviously the games. Now, when you do this, when you first when it first looks for all the games... You know, it comes up magnetic scrolls. That's all messy. You know, you can't really see what you're. Well, you can see what you're playing, but it's a bit messy. You can actually go in and if you right click, if you click on one of these and go up to iGame and go to Game Properties, you can then go in and change that. So I can call that Sensible World of Soccer, like so. And then what it'll then do is it'll put in a so alphabetical order. So I can go in and change that like so, and then click on OK. And then you'll see it kind of updates. So now rather than having this plus and minus sign, which is all a wee bit messy, you can change it to whatever you want. And again, because it's writing to the SD card, it is a bit slow, you just need to be patient. So once you come down a wee bit, what I'll need to do is actually rename all these, get rid of all the brackets and what have you. So there we go, there you're into the numbers and letters. So what I'm going to go for, now you can either scroll down like so and just look for, I mean let's, let's go for, uh, 
I'll show you a multi-load game. Um, let's try Alien Breed. Al so let's back up this way. I'll just use it up, I think. Alien Breed, there we go. Alien Breed 2 AGA, let's go for that. Double click and it'll say they're running Alien Breed and it says writing to disk, please wait. So just wait a few seconds. It'll come up with the WHD load screen and it'll tell you what button to press to exit the game. So you don't have to reboot your machine all the time. You just take a wee, it takes a few seconds. There we go. So tells you there, press print screen at the bottom to exit. Now this was a floppy game, a floppy disk game, but because it's been converted to a WHD load file, it loads as if it was a disk drive. Press fire. And it does load a lot quicker than if it was a floppy disk. Yeah, I don't know if you're getting a bit of feedback, I think, not feedback, so the, the sound stutters slightly. I've got to say, the graphics in the Amiga still blow me away. Right, there we go. And I'm using the joystick, so this could be a real Amiga, a really good. Superb, yeah. So print screen. Ah, now for some reason, because it's not a real uh, Amiga keyboard, the print screen button on this keyboard doesn't seem. To, it must be a different key. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to press F12, and I shall just reset the computer. Reset it again. But normally, uh, as I say, the print screen button in this. It's probably a different button in this keyboard if it makes any sense because obviously I'm not using a proper Amiga, it might be a different button. But it doesn't take long to, to reboot, as you can see. So let's go back up to iGame, I think, and just wait a few seconds for it to load. Obviously, you can tailor this. I mean, this is the default one that I've got the workbench, this is what it looks like. Um, I've not really spent too much time trying to change it. I'm more into just playing the games, you know, and I'm not really too fussed what the, the workbench thing looks like. I mean, you can... I've got a mate who's got something similar, and he's got his set up as a, an Amiga 4000, and it's higher res, and, you know, it looks super duper, but this this works for me. It works for me. So, right, listen, the last game I'm going to show, if you want to play, if you'd rather than scrolling down and looking for a game like that, you can go up to the top, and it takes a few seconds. So, say Star Glider. Star Glide there. Now you'll see it, it will, it's now found two games. It does, you'll see the games flashing. I don't know why it does that. It's kind of, it must, it's found two games so far. I think what it's doing is it's searching through the list and it's updating. So that's why it's kind of flashing a few times. So just bear with it. it. Takes a few seconds and then the games, there you go. The two games appear. So to load Star Glider, double click. Running Star Glider right into disc, please wait. Now this mu this game had iconic music. Um, it was one of the first Amiga games I ever got to see, and it just again it blew me away. You know it had uh, so F10 to quit. Uh, it had digitised speech. I'd never heard anything like this before. Yeah, that was, it might not sound impressive now, but back in 87 it was the dog's bollocks. So English, type in any word, bink, there we go. Now I think this game does play a wee bit quicker than it probably should. Maybe it plays quicker on the 1200, I'm not sure. I'm completely pants at this game. <laughs> as you can see, I'm good at that game as well. 
So to come out of that, it was F10, bink. And then let's load Star Glider 2. This is definitely the best way to run games. It's, it's easier. You're not many piss about with folders and all that kind of stuff. So again, just just be patient. Don't you know? Don't double click and then double click it again because it'll end up just not working. Um, and what you may want to do so F9 to quit. And um, what you may want to do is after you've run a couple of games, just reboot the machine. English. Blah, 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 blah. Bunk. There we go. How sweet is that? Impressive or what? If I remember rightly, the right mouse button does a speed and you can go up into the space. Let's go up, in, up into space. And you get this is a game you get. Whales, space whales. I need to slop a wee bit, that's why you can't see my bullets. I used to love this game. Yay! Yeah, and the last game we'll look at, so F9 to quit. Let's have a look at. Go for Shadow. Now what it does is it looks for games. Obviously that would go these words so off the beast. This will let you see a multi. I mean these two games I've just looked at were obviously single disc. But Shadow of the Beast, I think it came in was it four discs, three, four discs, something like that. Too long for it to finish doing what it's doing. I mean, I said obviously you can just scroll right down and find it manually. It's probably quicker actually doing that than doing it this way, but I just want to let you see the, the different options of this eye game. So there we go, let's go for Shadow of the Beast 2. Double click, bring to disc, and it'll tell you down here what key to press to exit. As I said, it's probably running a bit slower. There you go, press F10 to quit. It's probably running a wee bit slower because S, and I'd imagine an SD card is going to be slower than a proper hard disk on Amiga. I was never a big fan of, uh, of Shadow of the Beast games. Yeah, they had amazing graphics. Amazing, the sound was even better in my opinion, but the actual games weren't the greatest. Let me get the wee intro thing of this one. The ominous baby crying sound effect, I think. Quite an impressive intro this actually. Minimal sort of animation but Skip that and jump to the game.
yeah, super impressed with this game. I said I wasn't overly, I wasn't overly keen um, on the game itself. I thought it was quite a quite a basic game. The second one was definitely better. So anyway, you can see there. I mean, it's the scrolling is absolutely flawless. It really is almost as good as an original bit of hardware. So that is it, guys. I says I will put links to uh, a, a rough guide, as you know, basically to how you actually go about and install. Right, let's just come with this. Was the F10? Yeah, to give you a kind of a rough guide to how you actually install it. But use Google. I had to kind of figure out a lot myself just through trial and error. But it's not that difficult. Just spend a couple of hours and you should get there. But like I says, Raspberry Pi 2. Um, you want to get yourself a, a wireless keyboard and mouse if you can. And ideally, I mean, you can plug in a USB uh, gamepad. But for a Commodore Amiga, I always think you want to have a proper um, sort of 8-pin uh, Atari-type joystick. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, hopefully you found it kind of useful um, and hopefully it might make you want to actually go and get one but watch Dan Wood's video below, it's fantastic, he does a really good job, he explains it really well and I will put as much information as I can. So as usual guys, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe and finally thank you very much for watching.